Okay, so um, if my cameraman can just pan to the uh, elderly lady who is coming to cast her vote here, is for you to understand that Anambra people oh. really mean so much in casting their vote. Mark, can you just talk to us while you're coming to cast your vote? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Can you feel better today? Yeah, be able to vote today. I chose you. Now you're the chineke. Come with a lie, ni. Is one your guy do a ni? Chi a ni ovuma? Even in an avion, I'm going to say. Imwe in a anya ni ru camera ke. Now my ni ovuma. I chose you. I chose you. Chineke. Come with a ni. Nang kebi ne ni gwe. Ogodi ana kuna. Yes, and you could now wait a long years. What do you get at your any? And you are told on your get a love one. I love you. I got a little need. Oh, my, you're about what? So, what she's saying is that she's been praying to God to ensure that the right person will power into the seat in Anambra State for them pay for pensions ensure that the, the children go to school and that is why I sure that she exercises her right to vote eh e pe go mu sin na jesus christ born your wine amen okay so thank you that she has prayed it and that god is going to bring in jesus name so you can see that the turnout here is very high it's People have been complaining about beaver in world or uh, not really functioning the way it should. And I have NLB who is in room here, also on ground, who will be telling us what she has observed concerning this beaver issue. Please. Um, on the, on the beaver issue, um, we had earlier report that uh, a few. At least one or two. We'll cross in the now to Jemima Boloko, who is in Ames, where the PDP candidate Valentine Ozigbo is casting his vote. Let's go over there and t get that update. That is, of course, in the picture of Valentine Ozigbo. He is the That's candidate the for the, the yes of the People's Democratic Party, and he will be conducting his vote in Ames, where our correspondent Jemima Boloko is on the ground. Of course, that is him in the red hat and the white native, as has yeah. been the case usually. And apparently, that will be the first candidate uh, that, will, that be will be casting his ballot vote. among the uh, three big ones. Uh, we'll still be waiting for. Uh, the candidate of APC and the UBA, and the candidate of ABGA, uh, uh, Professor Soludo. And of course, there will be 15 other ones. There are yes. 18 in total uh, running to be governor of Anambra State. We will be able to you know, stay focused on this and keep Absolutely. track of the entire process because yes. we have been hearing that some voters haven't had a, a smooth transition as it pertains to them going up to the, the, the ballot, having their photograph taken and having yeah. their credentials noted. So we're hoping that that won't be the case for let, this let, candidate. Let's see what happens let's with, look. with uh, Valentino Zibu because Jamaima did say that it took like an average of 20 to 25 minutes for you to for go through for, for one yes, voter, person. you know. Let's see whether it would take that long for the candidate, and if the uh, if the if the gadget will work this time around. It looks very funny that it's only one um, card reader mm. that loads and loads of people have to deal with. Uh, and I was going to ask, maybe I'll still ask Ozzy. I was going to ask if you've observed. Uh, uh, it doesn't look like anybody is observing any COVID-19 protocol. A few people having their mask, you know, hung on their on their chain, but uh, that's the okay. At least one is wearing it properly now. But I believe that 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 will be the least of their worries for today. But then um, we don't know what will happen later, where you've got people. It looks like that is the wife of the of the candidate, and and the, the apparently they've, they've they've succeeded in capturing the candidate himself, um, Valentine Uzibo, and they are now taking that of the wife. Isn't it strange a bit that um, 
there is no standard positioning mm. uh, or for, a clear for background. The thing. Exactly, a clear background and stuff. Um, it's it's it's, but we we'll see what what happens. And like uh, Dr. Naji said the other time, uh, let's hope that this will not be a repeat mm. uh, of what happened in 2015 election, uh, when uh, when one of the presidential uh, candidates had to struggle with the card reader before uh, his details. Can we say clearly what, he, what he's doing there? Is he at this stage waiting for him to... Because, he, doesn't, because he, he, he won't cast his ballo right there. It mm. will have to be at a private area anyway. But just like Jamaima said, it looks like the process indeed takes a good chunk of time, time you know before you go and if that can if that of the candidate can be this low in quotes mm. what happens to you know to ordinary to ordinary people it is not well i think what he has done is to allow the wife to go first yes ladies quite first. gentlemanly ladies first. <laughs> quite gentleman okay so he okay it looks like it's seamless though it's just that he's taking Quite a bit of time, um, and it yes. is disappointing that it, we can see he's taking a bit of hand sanitizer. But it is quite disappointing, as it stands, that it is just the one. It's just the one that everybody. The one exactly. desk to a exactly. huge group of people. Exactly. Hmm. I, and you know, I wonder what the the protocol <laughs> was. We understand that he is the candidate, but did he? Was he in the queue for hours? Queue? Had he been there? I, I, I from don't the think morning? he was, but I think. Usually, I mean, there are two ways to go about it. Usually, you want to show, especially if the process is seamless and is moving, what you want to do is that you join the queue, mm -hmm. and then you want to show that you are just like every other person. Yes. Or um, you succumb to the, uh, uh, you know, to the support of your people to say, oh, as a candidate, we allow you to go to the, uh, to the front of the queue, which looks like this is what has happened yes. uh, with uh, uh, Valentine Ozibo. I think he's done with uh, he might the initial protocols. Now yeah. he needs to go and on print. I mean, we oh, start. they're just capturing him. Just like that. Oh, OK. It's a, it's a three-way process, actually. Yes. You know, uh, Dr. The, the Naji, card reader. we can still hear you. I know we can't see you just yet, but we can still hear you. I hope you are <laughs> able to see that uh, Valentino Zigbo, the PDP candidate, is being able to uh, start the process of him getting himself uh, ready to vote. We were just wondering whether or not he was among the, the crowd of people, whether or not he waited in the queue, whether the protocol is for you know, the candidate to go straight to the front of it. Uh, but it does seem as though uh, the process of that, that of him and his wife has been quite seamless, uh, albeit <laughs> a little long. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, uh, okay, Femi. Yeah, as you can see, he just arrived and he walked straight to where the accreditation and the is, is on voting okay. uh, process is being is ongoing. So they first of all captured his wife and now him. So so far so good. Everything is going fine as 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 he's been seated now. If you can see, observers are fully present here. Also, security presence is also major yeah so what i've observed here is that uh, the crowd now is the turnout is really impressive for, compared to what we came on earlier anyway and everything is going so far calmly so valos aside from coming out to capture his face that's one of the processes everything is going so far so good is it just the one is it just the one desk jemima to all of these people or is this just the one we're focused on because the candidate is there? Um, probably, but uh, I know his house is just a few blocks away from here mm -hmm. because from these observers I'm seeing here, I didn't see that present uh, at the MAC Ward Central School. So that is really funny. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Jamima, you, you probably didn't get the... Uh, I, so okay. what I can Yeah, go on. The observers, okay, the observers I saw at the other ward, which is Ambassy Central, the observers was just one person.
from what I'm seeing here, over maybe 10. 10 people are here observing it. E election Two observers, security you mean? officers. Okay. I mean, three, yes, election observers, yeah. Okay. So compared to what I saw earlier in the other ward, ward yeah. And I, I can see three security officers here presently. The turnout is not bad. Mm. Obviously, this is a uh, community. I mean, yes, people are... People intend to come and show support. Everything is peaceful so far. Okay, Jamama, two, two key things. Uh, tell us, was that was that a special privilege uh, granted to uh, Valu Zibo to come to the uh, front of the queue because we didn't see him uh, on the queue earlier? Um, and then how did the, the people feel about that? And secondly, uh, we've been talking here in the studio, um, what was the level of compliance with COVID-19 protocols like over there? Are people talking about it in any way? Are people wearing their masks? Uh, hand sanitizer has been used. What's your observation so far? Okay. My, okay, let me answer you first. The first question is, um, is he privileged? Actually, he just walked, he was, they welcomed him, maybe because he's from this community, like I said, and probably people are showing support. He went down to the chair streets and he started convincing his accreditation immediately without minding the people on the queue. Uh, I won't go further on that. Anyway, in terms of COVID-19... COVID-19, I can tell you, I just saw somebody wearing a face mask, and it's only one person. With a turnout of about 500, more than 500 people, wow. yeah? So, so far, so good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even the candidate himself is yeah. not wearing a face mask, but I believe, maybe they believe the COVID-19 uh, uh, disease is not available in this part of the world, <laughs> so let's watch and see. All right, it's a sunny day, isn't it? So maybe that might help. We can see Val uh, using his handkerchief to, uh, to, to clean his head and face yeah. and everything. Uh, but the question that Adifemi asked earlier, uh, is it just one um, accreditation mm -hmm desk uh, that is available, uh, and how do you think that this will impact on the timing of the election? Uh, we are aware that by 2.30, uh, normally accreditation is supposed to close, but then anybody that is still on the queue will be able to vote. It is almost 11 a.m. now, uh, three and a half hours to uh, what was meant to be the closing time for accreditation. How do you think this, this will pan out, given that there are more than 500 people, as you said, waiting in line uh, to exercise their franchise? Okay, for this ward, this particular ward, which is called uh, Central, I mean, Central, they have five um, units presently here. Yeah? And as of um, time of um, closing for voting and accreditation, I spoke to uh, one, some observers who say this actually ward is going to be closing by 3.30 p.m. today. Accreditation, voting stops. So, you see, they have an hour... They have an hour to... An extra, extra yeah, hour to granted. 3.30, if you okay. can. 3.30. Okay. An extra hour compared to the other world, which is 2.30. That is my observation, I, uh, what I heard from the observers, rather. You, you told us earlier about the presence of police um, officers. How is it now? I mean, is that place secure with uh, more than 500 people uh, large, if you like, for a, a unit like this, large voter turnout. How is there a high sense of security, especially for the ballot boxes and for the officials and the youth core members uh, that are uh, superintending over this exercise? What, what, what's your assessment of security? Okay, uh, my assessment here, what, what I said earlier, the other ward central had more security presence. Aside from uh, Val's uh, protocol, there are about three officers on ground. We have more observers here than police officers on ground here. So, but from what I'm seeing, the security situation, everything is still calm. Probably this is because this is his community, like I said. Yes, mm -hmm. compared to other wards. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Mm. Understood. I mean, the process of him sitting down, Jemima, does seem to be a little longer than the woman right before him, who we believe to be his, his wife. wife. <laughs> Is that because she's still casting her ballot behind that board there? Do you know what the delay is? Yeah, I think uh, he's having an issue with getting his thumbprints on the on the machine. He has he has been captioned. Uh, was causing the delay. They are using hand sanitizer, spirit, and all to try and see if they can caption him. And we're still wondering. You see, you see, this is uh, the kind of problems. This wards will face with this kind of delay it's almost 15 minutes now since he, he arrived and he's not capturing his thumbprint so that's why we're talking about how many people will they be able to capture before the end, end of the day aside from accreditation but what was the actual process uh, did, did, did i next say that if if the um if the card reader fails to in terms of the the, the thumb, you know, thumb printing or whatever, uh, capturing your face might suffice. Or is it that you have to, you have to go through everything before you are allowed to vote? How, how does it work? You have to go through the proper registration, accreditation, captioning of your face. They probably say it captures better when you're under the sun. That's why you saw earlier Val and his wife under the sun being captured and finally the thumb print so you have to go through that process or you will have to wait aside before you can leave the place if not your accreditation and everything is not valid at this point okay understood understood That's you guys. dr chima we'll bring you in here i hope you were able to hear uh jemima there and also see the images of the pdp candidate uh, casting his vote. It does seem as though the process is taking a little longer than what we had observed er earlier. What do you have to say about that? Well, if, uh, they say, there's a saying, if it happens to the best, <laughs> it happens to the rest. Mm. So if there's uh, some difficulty in the candidate uh, executing the process in record time, even with all the photo show mm. uh, to bring the best, uh, to beer, then uh, you just uh, be left to your own imagination what will be happening to the, to the rest. Even in those other locations outside the star polling units. Star polling units are those ones that uh, the candidates uh, will vote at, so perhaps the best of uh, preparations may have been made so that they will reduce the level of agitation behind or from supporters. That's right. But definitely, INEC has problem, and uh, it needs to address that very quickly because it appears they, they were so high in talk mm. and uh, very focused on, uh, on uh, security and uh, may have been uh, short-sighted on the issue of uh, uh, logistics right. because uh, if the machines are not working well, they have no, it has no meaning that they arrived early even if they were dispatched early. And what will happen to those people, the voting might be extended till into the night, oh. and those areas may not have electricity. I will leave you to the, uh, to the conjecture of what will happen at the end of the day. Because yes, the election itself will be thoroughly compromised. Oh. Even if it is not, there will be no credibility. People will not believe uh, if their own candidate does not emerge, they will believe that it's a as a result of uh, the fact that the election was, uh, the odds were against them. So the INEC must take um, ordered steps now. And before getting to that place or places, make pronouncements that will be carried and repeated all over in radio and uh, social media that this is the step they are taking so that people have positive expectations that things are being done to redress the situation. Otherwise, it's not looking very good. That, that's right. I mean, it, it, an average of 20 minutes for a candidate, which, as you said, means that it might be longer for other people, uh, can be the best that INEC can do. In an isolated election like Ab this. Absolutely. I mean, just one good. state. Just yes, one state. Yes. It looks to me like this is a problem of the Beavers um, uh, technology that INEC has just introduced to 
at the election. Uh, it might be working, as we observed, but then it is slow, and, and, and that might uh, have a telling effect you know, on the outcome they of the election. Have, uh, they ought to have practiced this thing very well, tested, tested it, and they tried and tested them all over and over. They had all the time in the world. Mm. They had the opportunities. They had the money. Yeah? Mm. So what is the problem? Exactly. Only one election mm. in a small, tiny state, you know, with a reasonably a reasonable level of uh, enlightened people participating. Absolutely. So it's not an seen. illiterate uh, bunch that you are dealing with down in Anambra State. Mm. They are very enlightened, highly traveled people. So Valu Zibo is about to address the media, uh, having obviously voted uh, yes. together with his wife. Uh, and I think that what he has to say uh, will uh, more or less capture his own assessment of the process so far. And because he also will have heard from other part of uh, other locations in the states, at least it will be an important uh, insight into how his mind is thinking and mm -hmm. possibly the mind of the PDP machinery, uh, the party that he represents uh, in the Anambra election. If, if Jamima can hear us, um, I'm sure that she must be preparing to, to join the media team that is about to interview the candidate. Hello, Jamima. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, okay. Sorry, we want to take him exclusively. All right. Well, well, so just hold on, like it's okay. uh, like for f uh, five minutes or so, he'll be done. No yeah. problem. Thank you. All right. So that that would be a good one for yes. Jamima to speak to the candidate exclusively. He will naturally brief the press sure. and say what he wants, but mm -hmm. of course we expect that he will speak. While uh, we wait for that, it may well be a good time for us to introduce uh, <laughs> our guest. Yeah, Missy has been waiting. Yeah, Missy, I did okay. Of course, it was the BBC reporters here for our newspaper review. And it might be a fitting time to talk about our candidates yeah, right sure. before um, uh, Valentine uh, speaks to us exclusively. Over to you. Yes, so um, this is the big story on all the papers. Uh, lots of apprehension about the result uh, today. Uh, a rise, uh, sorry, this day rather, <laughs> is uh, leading here with the headline is Anambra votes amid fear and tension. Saludo, Ozigbo, Bar are front runners. Um, there is a recurring theme in all the papers about this anxiety and whether or not that would lead to low voter turnout. But from what we're seeing, people seem to be coming out willing to exercise their democratic right to vote. Um, the security situation is something that's also been mentioned in a lot of the papers. Uh, the IG of police had said that 85% of their personnel were going to be on ground, and that's about 30,000 officers. But from what your reporters are saying, we're not seeing that evenly distributed. Um, and then some people are also concerned, some of the other papers are talking about voter apathy. Are people fed up? with uh, the incumbent? Do they even feel like there's any point in voting? But as we can see on ground, there are a lot of people uh, coming up. And in, in this day, there is a sort of analysis of the three major candidates looking at their strengths and their weaknesses and what will come through here. Um, but bigger is the concern about potential political violence, which I think sort of raises more questions about our elections to begin with. Why is it that every time there is an election, there is concern about whether or not it will spill into violence, even though INEC have promised a free and fair election. Can they guarantee that? Um, will the result be respected? These are the sort of questions that are that are coming up. I mean, I saw that you guys were speaking earlier about the peace accord that was signed, yes, right. which is obviously a positive step. All the candidates have you know, expressed their wish to have this remain peaceful, but whether or not that will remain the case, remains to be seen. Frustration with the voting machines not working and that type of thing. I mean, it's not great, given that there's been so much time to, to prepare. Um, but yeah, I mean, lots of anxiety and excitement, I guess, <laughs> exactly. to see what happens next. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, it's the news of the day, just like, yeah? just like you said. And tomorrow, of course, you know, that's what will continue exactly. in terms of results, you know, trickling in, depending on the time that INEC is able to, um, uh, call the winner, mm -hmm. you know. But um, an important part of what has happened, two key things that you mentioned, the security and the anxiety part, and then uh, turnout. Turnout, it looks like it's been good so far, yeah. except for the youth.
just like you know, somebody mm. rightly observed, where are the youth? We could see the elderly, we could see the physically challenged people, you know, we could see, uh, women. I mean, practically no, women, women, yeah. women, you know, have turned out in some uh, senatorial district, you know, a lot more than even the men. But then the youth who, just like the uh, election observer observed, who would turn around to say, oh, we demand this, we want better government, uh, this is how to show that you care. Uh, in terms of who represents you. So I think that if they, mm -hmm. if they have valid PVCs and they're watching and they can see that uh, IPOB is not stopping anybody from voting, maybe this is the right time uh, to get out of the bed or, or leave the TV for now and come uh, to the polling unit and exercise that franchise because it is important uh, that you are part of uh, those who determine who will rule you so that you don't turn around and say, this is not what we, who we wanted, we didn't like this, etc. So I think it's an important uh, observation that we've not seen so much of the youth, even though we saw a, uh, a young guy there who said, oh, this is the first time I'm not yep. collecting a dime, I'm doing this for free, you know, that, 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 was, that was good, but we need a lot more like him, who obviously, I mean, 2.5 million uh, eligible voters Yes. I will imagine that up to 65, if not more, a percent of that number will be youth and young people. Uh, where are they? We might see 500 here, 200 there. Mm -hmm. By the time you add it up, you, you're still struggling to, to, to reach 250,000. So you need that demographic uh, of the youth that constitute more than 65 percent of the eligible voters to actually come out. So that by the time that coalition starts, yes. that you will have seen that, oh, really, yeah, the turnout was huge because this is this small. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're impressed Still because early. of the uh, backdrop of will this happen? Yes. Will it not happen? Yeah. But then to see 500 here, 200 there, it's good for the camera. But when collision starts, that's not a huge number at all. That's very true. That's what we we'll also see. need to be reassured mm. that if they step out yes. to vote, that the security agents will not molest them. That's because right. every youth in the southeast is a potential IPOB. <laughs> Whether or not you believe in the philosophy or mm. you're a member of that team, That's true. that is the fear. Okay. You, you, we may not discount that factor. That's yes. right. So there is need to reassure anybody who has a, a voter's card that the person will not be molested by the security agents. That's an important part, Dr. Naji. Thank, thank you. Uh, yes, do we have any other before uh, Val comes on? Uh, sure. So there's just one more. I know we have been focusing on the election, on the but election. there isn't. There is another important story on this day, which was about the vice president who came out to disassociate himself from the ownership. Sorry, of the yeah, it looks oh. like we will be crossing over okay. to Jemima. Go ahead, Jemima. Let's take a listen to what the PDP candidate Valentine Ozigbo has to say. Yeah, we are here live uh, with the People's Democratic Governorship candidate, Valentai Ozibo. Um, so I'm going to begin by what was the, how is the turnout so far and what is the process? I, was, I saw there was a little bit of delay. What is your take on that, sir? I'm actually impressed that um, the AMEC community uh, out in their numbers uh, came back from different parts of um, Nigeria to get to where they are registered to... Uh, execute uh, their franchise. You know, um, for me, uh, if not for the delay, everything's been perfect. And I'm worried that it took me that number of minutes um, to be able to cast my vote. I was hoping that I would come and just do the accreditation and go straight to voting. But it got to a point that network actually failed. We had to improvise. If uh, we couldn't find that solution, I wonder what would have happened. So imagine those in remote locations where there may be even poor network. So we need to make sure we recognize those peculiarities. What that means is that if we need to extend the voting time so that we don't allow people who are eligible not to cast their own vote, then it will be unfortunate. So I am... Um, not only commenting on the situation, but also by this, appealing to INEC and all the stakeholders to exercise patience and ensure that the right people who have all the authentication are cast their votes. Because that's the only way we can truly ensure that this election will be by the people, by the greater majority. We need more people to get their votes in, please. And I uh, Professor Yakubu, 
um, by this appealing that you reach out to your team in the various the 21 local government check where we have issues because right now there's no more incidents formed there's nothing to there's nowhere to complain so you're not going to be able to um, leave here hoping that your case will be treated later the only option is to extend the time all right what about uh, in terms of security, given the situation in Anambra State with unknown gunmen killing, what is your own, are you satisfied with the security forces present in Anambra State to conduct, to view this election? Yeah, well, you know, there's actually abundance of uh, security personnel, uh, which has helped to calm things down. But even more importantly is the fact that the people who were agitating before that there wouldn't be election has said, no, go ahead and let's go ahead and do the election. So with these two things, uh, they've added a boost to people coming out. And I'm also saying is, uh, I may see because I'm from here, it's possible because of the love they have for me, they're all out in numbers. So I don't want to use that to judge what's happening elsewhere. I'm still monitoring situation reports. And so if you're out there in your comfort of your home, hoping that you want to be safe and not knowing that indeed that could be uh, a, a recipe for entrenching further bad governance. If you're out there, please come out. Get up from the bed, get up from your kitchen, go to the, your polling units and cast your vote. It's safe to do so. You can see how we are here. You can, I don't even see any security personnel around me here. That's how it should be. Let us come out and do our duty. This is our civic responsibility. Let's go ahead and do it. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you. We have heard from the governorship uh, candidate of the PDP. So we'll give you an update later on in the day. Thank, Thank you. you very much for that update there, Jemima. Just to uh, reintroduce everyone in the studio so we're clear of what's happening, we are joined by Yemi Siadegoke, who is, of course, a BBC reporter. He was here to give us a bit more analysis on the elections. And we are still joined by uh, Dr. Chima Naji as well. Yemi, see, you heard uh, the PDP candidate there. He did say that if it's a situation that people don't have enough time, mm. the voting time should be extended. extended. And he also called on people uh, to come out and vote and says it is safe for people to do so. What are your thoughts on what he had to say there? I mean, yeah, I thought what he said was quite interesting, the fact that he didn't want to use his own home base as a marker for everything because he knows his own presence could perhaps influence how things are. So it was good, good of him to say that he was still listening to situation reports. And it is good to encourage people to, to come out and vote. As the gentleman said earlier, we need to make sure that people who are doing so feel safe, that security forces will guarantee their safety, that they will not start harassing or targeting young people mm -hmm. under the guise that they suspect that they could be related to IPOB. Um, but yeah, I mean, his comments were as expected. I, I do like the fact that he mentioned uh, the issue that he had with voting, the voting time, and being concerned about people who are in rural areas, if network issue is a failure where he is, what about even more remote areas? Um, what's being done to stop this? We don't want people being disenfranchised or people feeling like they're not having uh, their chance to vote. So he's raised a lot of interesting questions uh, for INEC. Thank you very much. We will now cross over to our correspondent, Ovia Timmy George. You'll remember that earlier there were lots of people who were quite upset at the fact that they were not able to vote because of delays and issues with the machines there. Ovia Timmy, give us an update on what's happening there. Have those people been able to vote now? A few minutes ago, it was an uproar here, a near chaotic scene because the people were afraid they could be disenfranchised. But now it's a breath of fresh air. They've been going through the accreditation process. They've been voting. We thought it was a redemption song for the INEC that the machine is now working. But a few seconds ago, I got a message that the machine is no longer working. So it's quite erratic and unstable like water. It works for some time. It doesn't work for some time. But the people are determined to stay here and go through the process and cast their vote. So that's the situation here. They've been angry. But this man has voted. I can speak to you now. Yeah. Emmanuel Chukuma. You're My looking at the Chukuma. camera. Emmanuel Afek is there. Okay. I just voted, but what I have to complain about is the accreditation is wonderfully slow. Looking at the people that's uh, clustered here, I don't think by this pace they can succeed in accrediting everybody here. So something has to be done. 
because I'm afraid people might be disenfranchised if they continue in this manner. So what I want to proffer as a social issue, call their superior or whatever that is in charge to expedite these things so that others will go ahead and vote. You know, so if they did not vote, it that means that being in this franchise, which is not good, I, I, like many people have been here since 7.30 a.m. Now I can imagine how, if I can vote 20 minutes ago with this pace, I don't think uh, many people here will vote. They should increase the pace of accreditation. Something has to be done, in, in, in fact. Thank you, Emmanuel. Yeah. Okay, I can speak with you. Um, it's been quite uh, unstable down here. The primordial verification system. This man was perhaps the, the most angry in sub-Saharan Africa, but now he has voted. <laughs> How happy are you? I'm not. I've not voted. You told me, you told me earlier that the machine... My brother has voted, but I have not. But you said the machine was... It's was... working now. It's working. It works and stops. It works and stops. As of now, it's not working at the moment. So you're still angry? I'm still angry because I've not voted. Um, I would appeal to you as a patriotic Nigerian to just be patient and wait. The machine would work again. Perhaps. Yeah, I'm here. I'm waiting. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay, mm. you see, that's the situation here. It works for some minutes, and then it goes on, uh, perhaps, mm. you say, a wall, a way without leave. <laughs> Temporarily, that's how it is. But the people are determined to wait here as patriotic Nigerians to cast their ballot to see who will emerge as governor of Anambra State after the incumbent, Willie Obiano. But you can see the officials are trying to do some things. Um, the, you are the presiding officer here. The machines work for some time. What can you say about that? So I have tried to work with the machine for some time. It to start working. But unfortunately now I have tried three, three, three of the voters. It's no going. So I don't know whether or not the general problem from the states or only this polling unit. But I tried to contact my uh, technical staff from the secretary, from the INAC office now. Now, well, they have been here since seven o'clock. How many persons have gone through the accreditation process and the voting process? So far, since we started, we were able to accredit nine out of the. 777, 717 voters in this polling unit. So we can only able to accredit only nine out of them by this time. Accreditation nine, voting how many? Voting nine. Out of 717. Out of over 700 persons that are supposed to cast their ballot here, only nine have been accredited and voted. Now, the candidate of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, Professor Chuku Masoludo, is not yet here. He hasn't voted, but his father was here a few minutes ago, quite aged, elderly. He came and performed his civic duty. So now we've had the disturbing information, just nine out of over 700 eligible voters here at the Ophiri um, 002 polling unit of Isofia in Aguata local government area. It is worth noting that that area that Oviatemi George is speaking to us from is the, uh, the, uh, the local polling booth for the, for the APGA candidate. candidate, Charles Saludo. And that has been the, the case for most of the morning from what we've heard in terms of uh, the, up, the unrest little pockets of unrest with Oviatemi George there. You can see that there's, of course, a queue of people. Uh, you've got that same um, official who has been giving us those updates throughout the day, yes. still trying with his gadget to take photographs and continue on the process. But it, as Oviatemi said, uh, very disappointing to hear such a small number of people have been able to cast their vote Absolutely. despite the hours in which the ballot has been open. I, th I think it's a major problem uh, with this district, uh, with this constituency, uh, where the APGA candidate, Professor Charles Saludo, uh, will be casting his vote. From what Ovietemi said, uh, his father, his aged father, uh, has been able to show up and get accredited and possibly uh, voted. Uh, but given what is happening, it looks like uh, uh, Charles Saludo himself might take you know, some time uh, before he joins the queue, because a nine out of more than 700 eligible voters uh, within that OFI uh, uh, polling district uh, that is just not good enough. And just like uh, Professor Naji uh, hinted the other time, uh, it, it only takes a little while before people start insinuating uh, that it looks like uh, a particular area 
uh, is being targeted, especially if that area happens to be the strong base mm -hmm. uh, of one of the leading candidates, in which case uh, it's uh, Professor Charles Saludos's um, uh, uh, stronghold uh, in that area. That's not good enough, and we are not hearing yet from INEC. Uh, the gentleman yes. who's been speaking uh, is basically, uh, you know, uh, is, is showing exasperation yes. that uh, there's really nothing that he can do. It, it's it, incredibly it frustrating. Very, very. Yeah. Because, you Even know, for the, him, you can absolutely. see, you can see uh, from what the guy is saying and from his own, uh, uh, you know, frustration that this is not uh, what they bargain for. Mm. Uh, what is surprising, mm. though, is that there is no backup yet. Mm. Uh, he, he did tell us more than two hours ago that it looks like something will come from Orca, uh, the state capital, or something like that. Uh, but from what we can see, people are now, um, you know, uh, milling around the place and, and they are desperate. They are desperate, you know, to vote more so that uh, the candidate of the PDP has, you know, exercised his franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, it's That's likely true. that uh, the candidate of APC uh, sooner than later will also, will, will also uh, cast his ballot uh, in a very short time. So uh, for... Uh, Soludo's strong base to be experiencing, experiencing these um, hiccups, uh, uh, INEC will need to come out decisive and speak to the public to reassure them and look for an alternative. You know, Dr. Naji, we had spoken about this earlier. In the weeks running up to this election, INEC were very confident that this would not happen. They had implemented this machinery and these protocols, these approaches, to avoid a situation like this. Unfortunately, this is what we're seeing on the ground now. Is it too early to say that this is a failure of INEC? What would you say? Well, there is a saying that the morning predicts what the evening will look like. Even though some people would uh, counter by saying that um, be a witness to what will happen in the afternoon. But what we are seeing now is a Nigerian thing. Uh, the frenetic nature of effort of people in authority to go to the press to announce successes of uh, what they have achieved, blow it and all that, instead of looking more internally to see if there is any hiatus that needs to be addressed. This is something that is not to be done in the laboratory. This is a field item. It's supposed to have been tested, even if uh, they do it like uh, those people doing sensors. When you have a sample and then you implement it in the field, uh, it's not a laboratory item. This is just a simple equation. equation. If the, the general election comes, it's a polynomial equation, and they are not able to solve what, whether they can get X and Y not to talk about the way they are saying X, Y, Z, and ad infinitum. So this is quite uh, uh, unacceptable because uh, we have spent quite a lot of money, and the National Assembly has always ensured that uh, monies appropriated for INEC uh, are not tampered with, and they are released timelessly. And uh, there has never been any complaint about money. So there is absolutely no justification for the investment we have make, made in this machine. And uh, all the clamor for electronic voting, this is a, a, a sabotage to that clamor, and that's the only way to go. We see that the electronic uh, processes work in this country. Otherwise, the ATMs of this world, the bank, um, e-banking, and now even the e-naira, everything is going electronic. So why would we come across as we are incapable of implementing simple processes? So, uh, and this is a very sensitive thing because interpretations will be given, insinuations will be made, and INEC will be the culprit. Even if it, uh, some uh, rogue elements in the INEC, if they achieve the, a certain purpose, we have got we'll be happy. images of Andy Uba uh, making his way to cast his vote. If that, that is him uh, at the... At the desk there, I believe it is. That's it's not the, the strongest image, but that the is the candidate. Absolutely, Andy, Dr. Andy Uba. Uh, you know, he's just arrived at his polling station, and I think he's about to commence his accreditation. Is uh, showing uh, uh, the he's camera. Just, it, yeah, he's just yeah. put his vote into the ballot oh, box. Oh, he's, he's actually just you know uh, cast his vote, uh, Dr. Andy Uba. I wish you hope that um, he will speak to the media, isn't he? Yes, Abel Edukemi like is it. on the ground there. We can see him in Absolutely. one of the caps. Hopefully he'll be able to uh, get a comment from the APC candidate. But we will 
uh, dip back to that once we get a bit more confirmation. I'm sorry to have uh, had to inter interrupt you there, uh, Dr. Naji. Please do continue on on your point. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a desired interruption because we must capture all that is happening on ground yeah. uh, so that we'll be able to uh, interpret or analyze it in the studio. Actually, the, what I'm saying is that there should be a uniform treatment of all the candidates. We are not even seeing the other. Uh, the other ones are also candidates, no less. Exactly. Even if you Eight, say they are not the popular, them, you know. they, they might be surprises. That's true. The, 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 the one that you think may not emerge, <laughs> if you expect that a particular uh, tree will fall, you know, because it is already drying. The one that is uh, blossoming with leaves, you know, uh, might just uh, be struck by thunder. So you, you, uh, surprise elements are, <laughs> are not uh, to be discounted in any electoral process, even if we are too sure, given Nigerian uh, factor, that those uh, some candidates will just be there as uh, seat yes. warmers. However, there is need to, to treat everybody equally. That is the, the, the equity. Uh, of uh, the electoral process, you know. All right, so, Dr. Naji, yes. I think uh, the candidate of APC is about to uh, speak to the, the press, uh, Dr. Andy Uba. Um, who do we have there, Adifemi? We have Abel Ejikemi on ground. We're hoping Able, that we'll yeah. be able to hear uh, Andy Uba make a statement uh, as soon as possible. Things are going very well. I'm very happy about this. I can see that we are on top. We are going to win. This election is done already because we planned our election. Things are wanted to work. No, delay. No, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Right. Well, I mean, it's not the greatest uh, connection there. Mm. But the little we did hear from Andy Uba were quite strong words, saying that he <laughs> believed APC would emerge. Uh, yeah, me see, you heard, um, if we were to contrast that, compare that with uh, Valentino Zigbo's comments, he was, a bit, he was a bit more peaceful. He was still talking about the electoral process, making sure as many people had the opportunity to get to the ballot, and talks about perhaps the time being extended. Obviously, a little different to what the little we were here able to hear from Andy Uba there. Yes, he definitely seems a lot more confident and focused on his own victory. But I did want to pick up on a point that the doctor had made earlier about the amount of money that um, has been allocated to INEC for these elections. Given the part of the world that we're in, we know that there tend to be issues with network and power and all those kinds of things. So it does raise the question, you know, why haven't INEC come up with a sort of contingency plan for failures like this, where we're seeing issues of you know, network or connectivity issues or not being able to catch up, why isn't there a contingency plan in place um, rather than having, you know, people spending 20, 30 minutes, an hour? Later they will not decamp. So okay, what are you candidates yeah. of the APC's back on, on, top. on, on top. APC is on top. I'm going to win. We have no, have no doubt about it. Please don't have any doubt about that. Up guy is finished and he's gone. PDP is nowhere. You know that for sure. Thank you very much. So people actually came here as early as 7 a.m. Yes. There was actually a delay. You can see what is, you can see how enthusiastic they are. They want to vote. They want to make sure they vote out Africa from here. We're going to do so. All right. Thank you very much. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't appear to want to speak at length mm -hmm. uh, with the media, which is, you know, I mean, um, not the best because the only business that he's got today is to cast his ballot as he has mm -hmm. done and then to, you know, if you like, uh, uh, assess what has been going on, you know, from different parts of the... You know, parts part of the state, but uh, Dr. Andy Uba didn't want to spend so much time uh, talking and sharing perspective, uh, but, um, you know. Abel, you know, you were able to hear him far better than we were. Uh, the little sound bites that we were able to get from Adi Uba seemed to be very much still him in his campaign mode. Uh, <laughs> what, what else were, did he say that we weren't able to get? What was the, the general thrust of his comments to you just then? Abel, I was asking, uh, I was asking you to give us a bit more detail on what Andy Uba had to say before he left there. We weren't able to hear him so well, but I know because you were stood in front of him, you might have been able to capture a bit more of what he said. If you could share that with us. 
if I can hear you correctly, here yeah, is quite noisy. If I can hear you correctly, you you did say you wanted to know more about what Andy Uba had to say just before he left um, this polling unit. He was here. He expressed um, optimism that he is going to come out on top. He said that um, his party, the All Progressives Congress, has actually collapsed every other political party here in the state. He was optimistic, hopeful that um, his party and himself will emerge um, victorious at the end of the day. Just behind me, you see people queuing up to cast their ballots. Yes, there was quite a, a little delay in electoral materials arriving this polling unit, but immediately they arrived there. We saw the Beavers um, device being used immediately to capture electorates to cast their ballots as well. We could also see some um, electoral uh, uh, observers as well casting their ballots, uh, observing the, um, the um, process. The only, the, only, the only issue I can say so far has been the fact that uh, um, security, uh, security officials actually arrived here quite late. They came in just a few minutes ago before the arrival of um, the All Progressives Congress and gubernatorial candidate. But so far, it's been peaceful. So far, it's been quiet here. No, no insecurity threat whatsoever. People here in Uga community are actually casting their ballots, and it's been quite peaceful. Okay, we did, like we said, we didn't hear much from uh, Dr. Andy Uba. Uh, but but uh, from your own assessments, I mean, you've given us a broad canvas of what's going on. Uh, in terms of turnout, given we know uh, in other constituencies where you have more than 700 eligible voters, but then only about 10 people, 9, 10 people have been accredited issues uh, with the beavers here and there. Uh, where you are, how many eligible voters are there and how far have they gone in terms of who have been accredited and who has been uh, able to vote so far? Please, can you repeat your question? I can hardly hear a word of what you've just said. Okay, what's your personal assessment of the uh, number of eligible voters that you are expecting uh, in that particular uh, voting area? How many people are we expecting and what's the average time that it takes for an individual to, to vote? Yeah, w w when we came here initially, as around a few minutes past um, eight o'clock, we saw a, quite a handful of um, voters who just came in and moved away due to um, the late arrival of the electoral materials. But immediately, the, elect the um, election, the INEC um, officials came here. We saw lots and lots of people coming in to cast their ballots. The INEC officials actually told us that they have more than 560 um, accredited voters in this um, polling unit alone. And these are people that has been expected to cast their um, ballots. If you look just over here, you'll see the um, INEC official waiting for people to come and uh, cast their uh, ballots as well. So, so far, it's been peaceful, like I said earlier, and we expect more people to turn up and still cast their votes. I was speaking with some observers who are resident in this uh, locality. He said immediately the INEC officials came in, people moved out to the uh, community to inform them that, yes, these INEC um, officials are here, and they started through, um, uh, uh, moving into this uh, community to uh, cast their ballots. Mm. Abel, earlier, uh, not just at your polling station, but indeed other ones, the, the consensus was the, the machines weren't working, people who were eligible weren't able to vote. Has it been your experience that anybody who is not eligible uh, has turned up and has subsequently been turned away from voting? Has anyone who hasn't been, uh, someone who is not legitimised, have, have they approached a voting booth yet and have they been turned away? Please, Femi, can you repeat, can you repeat that no, question? It's quite no noisy problem. here. I can imagine. And I can I'm actually struggling to hear what you're saying. I can imagine. I was asking you whether you've seen anyone being turned away from uh, voting because they have not uh, met the specific requirements, or is it that everybody If I can there... get you correctly, you're asking if anyone has been turned away. You're asking if anyone has been turned away from um, using this device. No way whatsoever. You can, see, you can see just behind me, there's a little fracas going on here. People are actually uh, conflicting, um, having a conflict of words between themselves, and it's the security personnel are here to actually handle the situation. And it's been rowdy just immediately after 
after uh, the arrival of uh, the APC candidates. But so far, the Beavers device has been working very, very efficiently. No one has been turned back. Everything is working very well. The Beavers device, once you come in, you're captured immediately. And if you can just, if you can look here, you see this woman who is having a, a thumbprint being captured. That's the Beavers device, which is working very efficiently. So far, there's been no issue at all whatsoever with the Beavers device. It's working very efficiently. No one has been turned back. We expect that as time goes on, people will still cast their votes and go back to their various destinations. All right, Abel, we know that this is the stronghold of uh, Dr. Andy Uba of, of APC. But how, how are the party agents, you know, and supporters, how are they conducting themselves, the party agents in particular? Yeah, as you've rightly said, this is actually the stronghold of um, Emmanuel Andu, but this is quite uh, his stronghold. So many voters have interacted with actually rooting for his uh, candidacy. So many people have told me that, yes, they, are, they, they want change. They want the state to be keyed to the central um, government. You, you definitely know what that means. People here are conversing as well. You may not see the, the uh, uh, party agents with their uh, jackets on, but they are party agents conversing, discussing, talking to people, conversing for their uh, candidates and ensure that the candidates emerge victorious just here um, in the polling unit 17 and polling unit 18. So there's no doubt people are out but definitely this is a stronghold of the candidates of the All Progressives Congress, Emmanuel Andoba. Hey, but are you able to tell us anything about how Andy Uba was received? I know that's his stronghold, that's his home constituency, so you'd imagine he'd been welcome, welcomed well. But what was that reaction like? I, did he stay on the queue? Was he swamped by people? What was his arrival scene like? Yeah, it was a very, very joyful moment. Immediately he arrived, he stepped onto the queue to stand in line and wait for his turn. But people urged him, people moved him, people urged him to step forward since he is the leading candidate in this um, area. They urged him to come and step forward and cast his ballot, which he did. And he, um, the Beaver's device captured him, took his fingerprints, and he cast uh, his uh, ballot here and before leaving the uh, scene. So it, people here are very happy that he has come around. You, you could see so many people singing his um, praises, very happy and expectant, of course, that he will emerge victorious at the end of the day okay what, what time is accreditation ending is it 2 30 or 3 30 as we have had today at uh, two different timings and how many people are you expecting we're trying to gauge uh, if uh, the time allocated will be sufficient for the turnout of people that are coming to vote today if i did get you correctly you're asking for the time between which um, electorates can cast their vote Definitely like what I'm, Mahmoud Yakubu told us three days ago, it was as it's expected that accreditation will begin by 8 up to 10 a.m. And by 2 a.m. election is over. But INEC officials arrived there just a few minutes to 10 and accreditation began immediately as well as voting. But so far, we, we've, not got, we've not gotten any idea as to when and they're expected to um, close on the business of the day. But we know that um, the um, voting is over on for today. Okay. Thank you very much for that update, Abel. We come back to the studio. Dr. Naji, you've been able to now be able to compare the, the, the addresses from two different candidates, that of Valentine Ozigbo and, of course, that of Andy Uba. Very different. Of course, they are different gentlemen, but also different styles in how they chose to address the press. Were you expecting that? Uh, well, of course... Um... Politicians are incredible uh, optimists, and uh, when it appears uh, you have uh, some leverage of having the government at the center uh, to be of the same party with you, uh, the state, uh, there's a certain kind of uh, confidence that uh, it gives you, especially in our climb, where uh, rules are not always followed so strictly. Uh, if there are infractions, uh, the consequence for somebody who has a godfather uh, higher up may not be as uh, uh, bruising as it is or will be for another candidate. So uh, the candidate uh, who has a father or a, a child who has a father 
can afford to eat and uh, drop the plate. But uh, the other one will have to carry it to the sink uh, for washing, if you get my drift. <laughs> so it's not unexpected that uh, uh, the level of confidence exuded by the APC candidate will be higher. And even he has, uh, perhaps he has a more psychological need to do so, because it appears that uh, many other comp uh, candidates and uh, parties and uh, party uh, supporters appear to be, uh, you know, uh, pointing some fingers at him that uh, he is the one that wants to invade and uh, sell an Ambra state. And so he needed to uh, acquit himself with some degree of confidence to also lure the others that it appears his own is working. So I don't think uh, he, uh, he made uh, anything disappointing from what is expected of him. Then the other candidates should also be more of exhortation because if they, uh, when we majority, they say, you know, we we'll carry the day. So they will normally go for, since they don't have that kind of leverage, they will probably will have to give the impression that they, they want the people uh, to come along with them. Uh, and they are the men of the people and they will rely on their votes and all that and all that. So, it's, um, it's just uh, a matter of style. But I think Andy understood that uh, public opinion among some of the voters outside his uh, own, own, own enclave uh, may not be positive. So he needed to come across the way he did. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Naji, just to expand that a little bit further, yes. uh, you, 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 heard, you heard what um, uh, Dr. Andy Uba said about uh, Abga, the ruling party as far as the state is concerned, mm. and given the strongly worded letter that Dame uh, Bianca Ujuku, wife of the uh, founder of you know, Abga and the you know, um, hero of Biafra, if you like, uh, Ujuku said, uh, basically, if you like, nullifying uh, everything that Governor Obiano has done, do you think that this, is, this election is about the future of Abga and the possibility that this might be the last time that we will have Abga produce a governor in Anambra state. Like I said, anything is possible. Anything can happen in Nigeria. And um, when you have uh, um, only one item on fire, the risk, if you have just one piece of yam on fire, <laughs> the risk is higher for you if it gets burnt than somebody who has maybe three. They simultaneously, three of them cannot uh, get that bond. And uh, you see, being a government um, in power, uh, they say the good will follow that person who has the palm front. And uh, because uh, you hold the ball, all the players will be after you. Nobody's in the field to watch TV. So mm -hmm. where the ball goes, that's where the, the players will go whether those defending and those attacking. And the people attacking, their mission is to dispossess you. <laughs> so the same thing in football, the intention is to dispossess Abga, being that it has no godfather anywhere. And uh, they also try to present Obiano as the devil incarnate, because he is supposed to be the godfather of Abga. So if they are able to diminish him, then uh, Abga would have been gone, perhaps, uh, as Sulu does seem to be parading some uh, academic uh, credentials and all that, uh, they, they want to rubbish the government of the day and the, by process of association, that if you associate with the failure, then the likelihood is that <laughs> you are also going to be a failure in governance process. Then uh, the, there are a lot of issues uh, involved, uh, some of which are not uh, things for television. But uh, quite frankly, you could see that when uh, Soludo was uh, emerging, uh, Abga has been on the front burner. Everybody, and naturally so, because like I said, if you have the ball, everybody wants that ball, you know? And then uh, you cannot keep it. So the, the government of Anambra State uh, under Abga is at a very high risk. And uh, even the last ditch effort to commission the airport as a, an attempt to nudge up uh, the public uh, record of uh, the governor. Uh, 
appeared to have been aborted, but all this, nonetheless, I think they eventually were able to push it to another day and all that on the airport, uh, cargo airport issue. So uh, Abga is uh, the, the, the whipping boy, if you like. Uh, PDP will scatter at it. All the other candidates must have a bite at Abga, willy-nilly, because it's what the Abga is holding that uh, they want. Just like when you see the wrestling belt, your friend is uh, the one holding the championship belt. You greet him and say, I need that thing on your waist. And it's not going to come by a simple uh, exchange. So it has to be with a fight. Uh -huh. And sometimes uh, fight, fight with death. So the, uh, it is not surprising that uh, even the way Andy has stated it, that uh, they are like dead and uh, we will do that and all that. And uh, Abga also, it doesn't seem that uh, uh, some politics have been played well, mm. you know, uh, because uh, the, the, the election uh, from the party that caused uh, people moving to Abga, I mean, uh, APC and even some few to PDP and all that lately showed that uh, certain political gerrymandering did not work well uh, at the level of uh, Abga uh, management. Understood. Yeah, Missy, let's bring you in here now. You know, in the run-up to this election, security or insecurity played such a huge role, and that was why we did hear that so much police, more than 30,000, 34,000 police officers would be deployed. As you've seen from our coverage, that hasn't always been the case, most especially earlier on the day. And here we are hours later, and it's just a few of our correspondents who were able to say that, you know, there's a few officers here and there. What do you think the cause of this discrepancy is? That's a really good question. I'm not sure because, you know, the police and I did make such strong statements about making sure that the area would be secure. So it does, it does raise a lot of questions. I mean, at the uh, candidate that we just saw, uh, Mr. Ubar, there were reports of security um, agents being around. But was that just because he was there? Um, what about in other places that don't necessarily have candidates representing them? Why aren't there security personnel on ground? Perhaps that is why, um, at, at the point that you made earlier, maybe that's why young people aren't coming out, because they're not seeing these police officers who were promised to be on ground. It does raise a lot of uh, questions, uh, because they did come out so strongly. Um, and since security is such a massive concern, I mean, why aren't they there? If they're not there, then where are they exactly, and what are they doing today? Um, yeah, I mean, it would be interesting and, I guess, important to get feedback from authorities as to why they're not where they say they, they are going to be, uh, given, the, given how high the stakes are in today's uh, poll. Um, I wonder if any of our correspondents are, are available for us to cross to, because, you know, in the, in the coverage of today's show, I think the most animated scenes initially were with Ovieteme George, yeah. where he yeah. said that, you know, we had just missed what seemed to be some form of an uprising and people very frustrated. Mm -hmm. And I know, Dr. Chima, you'd said earlier that if people are not being able to get the opportunity to vote, most especially in the home state of the incumbent government, it could well descend into into chaos. We are unable to get a live update as it stands now, but is that still your position, that if people are not given the opportunity to vote, the insecurity that many have feared could be very well the people of Anambra at the ballot boxes? This is a natural psychological fact. When there is frustration, um, there should be the likelihood of aggression. Because uh, if the frustration continues to escalate, then the level of aggression will, you know, in tandem also escalate uh, to even violence. And um, that's why I said the communication needed to have been issued out by INEC, assuaging feelings, afraid nerves, that they are working, that is working very hard to ensure that succor will come. And um, so that at least people will expect that uh, something is going to happen than leaving them hopeless. Because they say that hope is like a lily. It never perishes. If you promise somebody that something will happen in the next one hour, you will say, OK, maybe there was logistic something on the road. Maybe in 90 minutes, uh, something will happen. But to leave it to the people that they are, got, that they are stuck with at that particular uh, location, 
is raising the risk very high mm. because uh, the the INEC officials there are themselves helpless, and the helpless man cannot help the other person who is on the same shoe, uh, not even by way of uh, uh, verbal, uh, you know, uh, suasion. So, uh, and uh, the length of time it has taken for the report, the first report, till now, and nothing has been heard to have happened, uh, shows that, uh, and especially when there is a differential experience from the Abgas uh, candidate uh, location and some other locations, and we are not even hearing what is happening in some other villages where none of uh, the polling units have, uh, you know, has uh, any of the candidates uh, voting. So that one is just uh, like a, a foregone conclusion that they must be worse off. So if there is a, a kind of sensing of differential treatment of uh, candidates' locations, then the interpretation will be quick to be that, uh, okay, INEC has compromised. And uh, even security-wise, we were asking questions. There was a truckload of uh, security uh, agents in a, a particular location, and even after we could see them sauntering in, in a, a vehicle in that um, location, none in the other location. So, I mean, uh, it shows uh, that uh, we... We, uh, many people are left to speculate, you know, even dangerously, and surmise that something uh, sinister was being planned for those locations. But I believe that uh, uh, by God's grace, nothing will happen. The only thing Anambra people now want is having come out to prove that they could defy the security threats. They need to have the opportunity to vote and be seen as having voted without let or hindrance for the candidates of their choice. It is immaterial who eventually uh, emerges in so far as the process is known to have been fair, free, and credible. All right, I was going to ask you, MC, um, the turnout of women uh, has been uh, you know, fairly impressive, uh, but then 18 candidates, no single woman. Uh, this is a state uh, where Dame it, it, it's here, I believe, uh, you know, once governed. Uh, this is a state where the, the late uh, Dora Koili uh, tried to govern. Um, so if women will play an important role on who becomes the governor, uh, do you think that um, uh, the sort of affirmative action that we would have expected uh, uh, has played any role in Anambra at all uh, in terms of masculine faces all through, no single woman trying to represent that uh, very important South East state? I think that's a really fair question, and I think that's something that comes up every time um, we do have elections across the country. Uh, why are there so few women candidates? Why are there so few women uh, in power? Uh, I think there are many, many uh, issues when we're talking about this particular subject. I don't think it's a case of, as some people will say, that women are not interested in positions of power. I do think that there are, you know, structural uh, inequalities that make it difficult for women to run. You know, as we all know, the nomination forms for a lot of these uh, political parties are very, very expensive. Um, there is the issue of godfatherism in some cases. There's also um, discrimination uh, against women candidates, religious or socio-cultural practices that some people deem that women are not necessarily fit to run. And then we have had cases of women across the country who have tried to run and have faced discrimination, they faced abuse, they faced harassment. I know I've certainly interviewed many female uh, candidates who have, you know, really, really been up against it when trying to run for office. So I think it's a multi-layered question. Uh, could affirmative action help? Perhaps. Uh, are the electorate ready for uh, a woman candidate? Will they give her the same re respect uh, afforded to male candidates? That's a bigger kind of conversation. I mean, I do hope as we are approaching 2023 that we are going to see more women in the mix. But I do think it's something that's you know, deeply structural that these political parties need to take seriously and need to do a lot, a lot of work uh, from the grassroots level upwards. Absolutely, yeah, me see. I think that you know one of the the great points you made very great points. I think one thing that stood out was that people also need to ask themselves whether or not these constituencies, these these, these states, are ready for 
women leadership because it's great to have the candidates there, but uh, is the electorate ready to vote a woman in? And I hope that the answer would be yes in the very near future, if that's not already the case. <laughs> I'm sure Dr. Naji will probably not, <laughs> not yeah, agree with that. Quite frankly, I, I would like to see a day uh, a good female candidate comes out. It's not just that you, the, the, the sentiment of being uh, the female gender, it is that the person should also be qualified, competent enough, and uh, highly knowledgeable. Because if you don't have knowledge in anything that you are uh, struggling to get into, uh, you will just be one of those pedestrians. So I believe that uh, Yemisi has uh, hit the nail, uh, pointing out all the factors. Even the women themselves do not seem to uh, display enough confidence in, uh, on their folk if they come out, because uh, perhaps there might be some mani manipulations or contrivances that uh, hinder uh, them from uh, supporting their fellow women. Because we have seen even in our, some professional bodies not to talk about uh, general elections. Once a woman, uh, you know, shows interest, they say you, you know, and that kind of thing. So the the women also have to first and foremost organize and give themselves. Uh, if women support a candidate, there's no likelihood that the person will fail, because uh, the men don't actually vote as much as the women, especially in the rural areas. You could see that even at what uh, we are working on now. So. Uh, it's just for the female to converse effectively and do what needs to be done. But you have to also give uh, consideration to the peculiar nature of our environment. Don't say because you are a woman, you are expecting uh, the Lord Angel to come and uh, leverage you. You have to do what uh, the other people are doing, just the way you do it in the same uh, class. Some women, women excel in some uh, discipline. So. Uh, it didn't come just because you know the lecturer. Many of them we know work very hard, and when they discuss it, you can see how the girls, uh, the ladies here, are showing that they, they have the certificate, and uh, that certificate certifies the knowledge. <laughs> so it's not a question of uh, because uh, you are a female that uh, you should be given the certificate. You must defend it, and you must express it, and aggressively go for it. If the child does not show uh, desire for similar or breast, Hardly would the mother, if she's very busy, uh, feed him.